Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to our Mental Wealth for the BISD community. Uh, today we have, uh, since it's May is Mental Health Awareness Month, we have Cheyenne Moreira from the Cameron County Public Health. She's a health educator, and she is going to be speaking to us about um, Alzheimer's disease and related dementias. So welcome to our BISD community. And um, we'd love to hear what you have to say and a reminder to everybody that this meeting is recorded for future access. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you so much for the invitation. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to speak about Alzheimer's disease and related dementia. It is important to know also that we as the public health um, entity for Cameron County have received funding and have actually uh, begun a new program uh, regarding dementia. And so we are very excited to start having conversations about this condition, especially addressing you know, our caregivers in our community um, just in discussing mental health and mental health awareness for in the month of May. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Perfect. Can you see the presentation okay? Yes. Yes. Perfect. All right. So good morning once again. Um, today we will be talking about just a general introduction to Alzheimer's disease and related dementias. And so going into a little bit more depth of um, what we are going to be discussing aside from Alzheimer's disease and related dementia, we will be discussing the different types of dementia, um, as well as the difference between Alzheimer's disease and normal aging, uh, signs and symptoms of Alzheimer's disease to keep note of, as well as risk factors of Alzheimer's disease, what is increasing our risk, and what can we do to reduce our risk. And lastly, we'll be providing some additional resources that are currently available in the community. I know that this uh, webinar is currently being recorded, but if anyone does have questions later on um, and they would like to reach out for further information, just go ahead and get into contact with Ms. Uh, Bellamy and we'll be more than happy to, to answer your questions. So what is Alzheimer's disease and related dementias? So first and foremost, Alzheimer's disease is noted to be a progressive brain disease that causes cognitive and functional decline. So very important to note that it is a progressive brain disease. Um, someone may notice signs um, later on in life. And according to the um, Alzheimer's Association, brain changes are already occurring 20 years um, from the time that they notice brain changes uh, to the point of them showing symptoms. So if someone is finally showing signs of Alzheimer's disease at 60 years old, brain changes were already occurring in someone at around 40 years old. So this is what it's, it's very important to note in regards to a progressive brain disease. It's not just something that happens at one moment in time and, oh my goodness, my loved one or this individual has Alzheimer's disease. So in this image right here, we're, we're going to be discussing that progression um, over the course of a continuum. And so someone, you know, in the beginning stages may be uh, noted as having preclinical Alzheimer's disease. So preclinical Alzheimer's disease in an individual typically doesn't show any symptoms, but is already having uh, changes in the brain occurring. So as we were talking about, someone at perhaps 40, 45 years old may be in the, in the stage of preclinical Alzheimer's disease where they're able to function uh, uh, with driving, cooking, you know, managing normal tasks, and not having any concerns. Then in the next stage after preclinical Alzheimer's disease, there's mild cognitive impairment. Um, so there might be very mild symptoms that may not interfere with everyday activities. There may be a little bit of trouble remembering here, a little bit of trouble you know, completing some but not all tasks and they're able to kind of jump back into a normal routine. But then following mild cognitive impairment, there then comes, oh, sorry dementia due to Alzheimer's disease in a mild stage. So now someone may be noticing that uh, symptoms are progressing and that some everyday activities are now becoming a little bit harder to complete. 
And then next stage uh, on this continuum is at a moderate level. So now it's becoming more frequently uh, more severe with completing these daily activities. And then lastly is the severe stage where someone would need 24-7 um, hour uh, assistance in completing their daily activities. So the difference between Alzheimer's disease um, and dementia, because we kind of typically group these conditions together, um, is the fact that, you know, dementia are other conditions that affect memory, thought processes, and functioning. But it's very important to note what's causing you know, the dementia, what is causing our memory loss? So think about it in the terms of cancer, right? Not can all cancer is the same. Cancer can affect different areas of the body. And so it's the same in regards to Alzheimer's disease, where it's one type of uh, dementia. And so in this slide, we will be covering the different, the other different types of related dementias aside from Alzheimer's disease. So very important to note, Dementia is the general term for loss of memory and other thinking abilities that interfere with daily life. So what could potentially cause dementia? As we've been discussing, Alzheimer's disease is one contributing factor. Then there's also vascular dementia, Lewy body dementia, frontotemporal dementia, and then mixed dementias. And we will be discussing the different types of dementias in this next upcoming slide. So in this uh, chart here, we see the name of the condition. So Alzheimer's disease is caused by um, plaque buildup, you know, so plaque as well as Lewy body, and you'll see it around frontotemporal dementia. So this is plaque that's building up on our nerves, right? Where it's kind of constricting and not allowing the, the nerves to transmit signals anymore. So they're noticing a more difficult response, um, a slower response to the point of no response because of that plaque buildup. Then we have vascular dementia. Um, so if someone you know suffers from a stroke, heart attack, um, has high blood pressure, diabetes, anything that is affecting blood flow to the brain um, and causing, you know, a moment in time where oxygen isn't able to reach and these nerves are uh, dying, this could be a cause of vascular dementia later on in life. And then lastly is mixed dementias. So not everybody knows this, but it, let's say someone may have vascular dementia at one point in time, they could also develop Alzheimer's disease. So someone may not only have just one type of dementia, but may have mixed dementia. So what are the signs and symptoms of Alzheimer's disease? So some important signs to keep an eye out for, whether in yourself or whether in a loved one, a family, friend, um, one, sign in, one sign includes memory loss that disrupts daily life. So if someone is forgetting you know, events, repeating themselves frequently, relying on more um, assistance with maybe like sticky notes, um, to help or like a book where you're constantly having to write things down and not able to remember as easily as what you have been before, keeping track of appointments, um, I don't know, daily you know activities, maybe a checklist of what you had to do that day. That's something to keep an eye out for. Um, difficulty planning or solving problems includes if someone is normally in charge of paying, you know, bills and staying on top of uh, that area of financial uh, responsibility and they're not able to, they're forgetting a payment here or couldn't remember that this was due um, or even cooking with recipes. You know, we know in our heart, uh, you know, in the back of our hand how to complete certain recipes because we had these growing up um, and we made these growing up and throughout life. And when all of a sudden you're not able to remember, you know, what, what else did I need to put in here or what am I missing? And it's not coming back as easily. Also something just to keep an eye out for. Difficulty completing familiar tasks, um, whether that's at home, at work, uh, and that includes, as we had brought up earlier, cooking, but also driving specific places, use, using a cell phone or even shopping. Confusion with time and place. So having trouble understanding 
an event that is happening later or losing track of dates. If we were to ask you today, what is today's date? You know, is it easy to come to mind? You know, okay, today is May the 21st. Or are we having a little bit of trouble um, trying to remember? Because I know sometimes our days can be blurred and, you know, the days fly by and you're like, wait a second. Okay, I did this on Monday. So two days later, it's this day. And that's perfectly fine. Um, trouble with visual images and spatial relationships. So sometimes individuals with uh, Alzheimer's disease or related dementia may have trouble with their balance, um, judging, you know, specific distancing. So they'll bump into uh, tables, chairs, they'll trip. Um, and this is simply because they're not, they have trouble with visual images and then, you know, getting that distance from the, the tables, from the chairs. And so they're not able to, to um, comprehend that. New word problem, um, such as with speaking or writing, so some individuals with Alzheimer's disease may have trouble following conversations. They may initially be engaged and, you know, being able to converse with someone, but then after a while, they're not able to keep up with the conversation because, you know, something else will pop up into their mind or they'll lose track of what is happening in the conversation. Um, and they may be paying less attention um, to what, specific words, you know, are being said and not being able to kind of correspond that. Like if I say um, a watch, you know, showing them like, okay, this is a watch. Maybe they might be calling it a something different. Um, or, you know, even you might notice with someone with Alzheimer's, they might be pointing to something and being like, oh yeah, the comb, but it's not the, it's not a comb, it's a remote control. So getting those word, uh, word, words mixed up. Misplacing items, unable to retrace steps. I know some of us, you know, we've, we're like, okay, where are my glasses? I can't find my glasses. And they end up being on the top of our head, you know, or tucked in our shirt. And, you know, that's completely fine if you're able to kind of like retrace your steps and be like, okay, I remember why I put them up here or in here. But let's say, you know, someone with Alzheimer's disease, this individual would maybe be putting their phone in the refrigerator and not being able to find it and not remembering why did I put my phone in the refrigerator? Um, so that's more of the, the misplacing items and being unable to retrace their steps. Decreased or poor judgment. Some individuals with Alzheimer's disease may um, have trouble remembering the last time that they had showered, or they may feel like they've showered that day, but it's actually been you know maybe three days, two days. And so in trying to tell them, no, you haven't showered in three days, they're like, yes, I did. I just showered this morning. And so, you know, they're not able to remember this. And so it's not so much that they don't want to um, continue with good personal hygiene, but it's simply that they cannot remember um, in regards to that. Um, lastly, well, the last two include withdrawal from work or social activities. Um, so let's say someone's really active in the church. They love to participate in festivals or, you know, different community events. And then all of a sudden they're like, oh, I don't want to go. I just want to stay home. Um, they may be starting to feel uncomfortable because they can't remember where they are or who they're with. And so in order to feel safe and comfortable, they just want to stay in their home, in their room maybe. And so this is something that many individuals uh, with Alzheimer's disease might start showing signs of uh, when they want to isolate themselves. They don't want to be as active or going out with family, going out with friends um, as frequently as what they used to. And then lastly, include changes in mood, personality, um, and behavior. So Sometimes we may have plans and let's say one little thing doesn't go to plan. And yes, we get a little bit frustrated and we're like, oh, but I really wanted, you know, to do this. And OK, but you're like, all right, well, we'll be able to do this some other time. Someone with Alzheimer's disease, one little change in a routine um, or in their system will cause chaos and they can become angry with this or about this. They can become really sad. Um, and so there's going to be drastic mood changes. They can be happy one moment and then angry the next. And this is simply because, once again, 
in regards to the nerve um, damage, the area that it's affecting in the brain, um, how these individuals control their mood behavior um, is how it's affected. So what is the difference between Alzheimer's disease and normal aging? It is very, very, very important to note that having Alzheimer's disease, having memory loss as we get older is not normal. We can age with our memory intact. We should be aging with our memory intact. It is not normal to forget how to dress ourselves. It is not normal how to forget how to drive. It is not normal to forget our loved ones. It's not normal to forget how to take care of ourselves, right? And so as we had covered before the top 10 um, warning signs for Alzheimer's disease, this uh, image also shows, you know, what's to look out for with Alzheimer's disease, but what's okay, not as concerning, it's part of normal aging. So at times with normal aging, we may forget names and appointments, but then later on, it tr it's a, there's a trigger and we remember, okay, yes, I remember uh, the appointment. It's going to be on Friday at this time. Or uh, I remember seeing them somewhere, that face, it looks so familiar. And okay, and then the name comes back later on. Um, so next, aside from difficulty planning or problem, pro solving problems, if you make occasional errors, managing finances or bills, you know, giving a little bit of extra money, but being like, oh, wait, you know, I gave you a little bit of extra change here um, or them, you know, being like, OK, here's your extra change. And you being like, oh, OK, yes, I remember now. Occasionally needs assistance with microwave or TV remote. Sometimes uh, devices can be a little bit confusing, especially if they're you know, technologically new and looking a little different than what we're normally used to using. And so if someone shows us once, maybe twice, how to use it, and then we know how to, you know, okay, I know how to press this button or this turns the TV on and I need to do this to change the channel, perfectly fine. Um, confusion with time and place. Getting confused, but remembering later, especially if it's um, I'm not talking about like a new city or a new area, you know, something that's familiar to you. If you're like, okay, wait, this is where I'm at right now. Okay. And if I go straight down this street, I'm going to hit this point. That's perfectly fine. If there's a little slight, you know, loss of confusion of where I'm at, but then a remembering, okay, this connects to this street, or I know where I'm at and how to get to this point. Perfectly fine. With uh, trouble with visual images and spatial relationships, um, vision changes, right, are normal according with our age. Um, so cataracts, you know, are a normal part of um, our aging. And so if we develop uh, cataracts in our eyes and undergo those visual changes, then that's something different compared to someone with Alzheimer's disease. Sometimes we have trouble finding the right word to describe, uh, you know, or uh, we're trying to remember the word like, oh, what is, what is that word to describe this? And then you're like, it's going to bug me all day. And then later on, it'll come to us. That's perfectly fine. Uh oh, um, as I shared earlier, sometimes we misplace our glasses. So misplacing items, but being able to retrace the steps and find them is completely normal. Uh, decreased or poor judgment. Sometimes we see that our car is due for an oil change and we don't want to go and take it. Uh, we're putting it off as long as possible and we're like, okay, it's finally, yeah, time I need to. That is completely normal. Sometimes, you know, especially if you're working eight to five, five days a week and you just want some time to yourself on the weekend, you know, or time to yourself in the evenings, that's not social isolation. You just, you know, need time to yourself and that's completely understandable and completely normal. And then uh, being irritable when a routine is disrupted that is perfectly normal as well. Sometimes we want things to go according to our plan, right? What we what we want to do that day, and some things don't go according to that plan. But um, being able to realize, like, okay, it can't happen today, but maybe later on this week or sometime next month, and not having those um, drastic changes in mood or personality. So now that we know about Alzheimer's disease and related dementias. Uh, we're going to be talking about what are the risk factors? What increases my risk of developing Alzheimer's disease? So with age, um, our risk does double every five years, especially if someone is greater than 65 years 
old. Um, so once again, age is a contributing risk factor. Being a female um, also increases the risk primarily because of the longevity. So females are living longer than males and genetic variants. So in regards to hormonal differences um, and those uh, bodily changes, um, that's a contributing factor in regards to that risk factor. Genetics, there are two different um, specific genes to keep an eye out for, and that is a risk gene and a deterministic gene. So individuals can be tested um, for uh, these genes to see if they are at risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. So the risk gene, if someone is deemed as having the risk gene, that does not guarantee that they will develop Alzheimer's disease later on in life. Um, the deterministic gene though, if someone is found with the deterministic gene for Alzheimer's disease, this will guarantee that they will develop Alzheimer's disease. Now, in regards to this gene, it is found in less than 1% of the population. So it is not at a very high percentage um, so it's it's something just to keep an eye out for and to note in regards to the difference between the risk gene and deterministic gene. Next is family history. I know a lot of individuals are concerned, well, if my cousins, moms, sisters, brother, you know, had Alzheimer's disease, am I at risk? So it's very important to note that it, if a first degree relative, such as a parent or a biological sibling has Alzheimer's disease, then there is potential, at, you're at a higher risk of developing Alzheimer's disease, but it has to be a first degree relative. Having high blood pressure, diabetes, as we were talking about, is also contributing um, to a potential development of Alzheimer's disease, as well as traumatic brain injuries. So if someone you know, ended up having a concussion when they were younger um, in life, they could also later on develop Alzheimer's disease, but these do not guarantee that they will develop Alzheimer's disease. It's just uh, different risk factors that will increase someone's risk. Reduced social and cognitive engagement. Um, so if someone is, you know, more isolating themselves, not trying to uh, challenge their brain, you know, doing puzzles or doing different, maybe learning a new language or um, different challenges like that, you know, not not actively challenging their, you know, mindset is also noted to be a contributing risk factor. And that's, that's important to note under the fewer years of formal education. Once again, do not guarantee that someone will develop Alzheimer's disease if they go to school for um, X amount of years or don't, you know, do puzzles or don't. It's just something to note that it could potentially increase someone's risk. And then lastly, um, especially because we are in a community of 90% being Hispanic, we as Hispanics are at 1.5 times more uh, risk versus Caucasians to develop Alzheimer's disease. And then African-Americans are two times more likely to develop Alzheimer's disease. Um, and this has to do with the social determinants of health as well as um, you know, contributing factors with our location, with our eating habits, with um, our cultural awareness and education of receiving you know, medical care and access as well. So how do I reduce my risk? We know what increases our risk, but what can I do to reduce my risk? Um, so staying physically active is one aspect, as well as staying mentally active, maintaining social engagement. If you currently smoke or, um, you know, to reduce the amounts of cigarettes that you are smoking to, you know, not smoking at all, as well as being able to have conversations with our um physicians, our providers, our PAs, our nurse practitioners, whoever we are seeing for our health um, to make sure that we are having this discussion with them in regards to any concerns um, and any questions that we have. So what do I do now? Here is a list of different resources that are located um, in our community. I know the first one, Alzheimer's Association. No, don't go to San Antonio. Do not worry about, um, you know, having to go to San Antonio. This number that's listed underneath is a 24-hour 
um, open line um, that will be able to connect anyone who calls for different resources um, and we'll be able to connect them with community uh, resources here in Cameron County. Also, uh, a wonderful agency is the Area Agency on Aging that offers a lot of assistance um, from transportation assistance to home modifications to other respite care services for those um, caregivers as well as individuals with um, disabilities who are in need of assistance. We have the Brownsville Neuroscience Center, um, the UTRGB School of Medicine Institute of Neuroscience, who is also conducting um, clinical studies, clinical research, and so they're able to assist anyone um, with a, receiving a diagnosis if they are concerned um, that they may potentially have Alzheimer's disease or related dementia, and they will be providing um, the testing for uh, free. It's just very important to call this number that's listed below and see if you do qualify for their research study. So that way they can go ahead and um, assist you in you know, this process. And lastly, for our caregivers, um, especially as we were talking about with mental health, it does take a toll on our caregivers, especially if they're caregiving for someone with Alzheimer's disease. Um, so I've listed the WellMed Charitable Foundation with a caregiver SOS program. Um, so I do have two uh, locations here listed with Brownsville and Harlingen, as well as um, any emails for, for those if you're trying to get into contact uh, with a specific um, specialist. And I believe that was my last slide, but thank you so very much for the opportunity to present um, today. And like I said, I know we don't have questions for today, but uh, we look forward to any questions that may come um, following this presentation. I think you may be muted, Ms. Bellamy. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I always do that. Okay, <laughs> thank you for being here. It was really good. Uh, I really like the slide where um, it it showed the, you know, the symptoms, some of the symptoms, and then the normal aging. Because I know a lot of older people, including myself, I have all those normal aging things going on. Uh, so you know, people worry about that, and when they're elderly, they don't research and they don't, you know, they just start to get panicky. So. But thank you um, for being here and for that last page, too, where people could find help. Yes, absolutely. And if I may, I, we also do have a presentation series currently going on in the community. Um, I have a flyer that I'll put on very briefly, and then I'll also send it to you um, via okay. email. So if you'd like to share that with anybody um, in the community, you're more than welcome. Let me just pull that up really quick. So this is going to be um, the present, the second presentation of our presentation series. Uh, this is going to be happening June 20th, um, and the topic is going to be understanding Alzheimer's disease and dementia. We will be hosting this um, on the 20th at, at Proyecto Juan Diego, um, and then for any individuals who are maybe uh, having loved ones in Harlingen or know of anyone in Harlingen, we also do have... Oh, um, this event going on in Harlingen Wednesday, June 19th at the Harlingen Senior Activity Center. So like I did share, I will get these um, to you, Ms. Bellamy, and if you'd like to also attach this or, or send this out, we'd be very appreciative. Okay. All right. So thank you for that, and thank you for being here with us today, um, and we'll keep in contact. Thank you so much. Okay. Have a great thank day. You. Okay. Bye-bye.